In the last video, I went over some various ways to add a workstation to a domain. So uh, I did that with online and offline scenarios and, um, you know, basic computer account provisioning, etc. Add computer on and uh, offline domain joins and blob files, etc. If it's offline. Uh, which it may be offline, and it's a great way to deploy. But now, perhaps, um, perhaps there are very so use that you need to maybe write a script. I'm going to go over writing a simple and quick script on the fly that can and will be used to rename workstations, add them to the domain, and add them to various OU paths. So there they are, right there. I made three simple ones. Yeah, these are airport codes. So that's Baltimore, that's Atlanta, Charlotte, Denver. So we're going to need to close that down and actually I'm gonna resize that before I do so. First things first, run the integrated scripting environment as administrator. I don't know. Um, then second, zoom in one notch and um, now that we have the script pane open, there's control D, there's control I. So I want to maximize this because there might be some lines that are of medium length. I want to be able to zoom in on them. So right off the bat, uh, kind of a note about, you know, just this script or any script. You can do it a lot of different ways. You know, this is just about simple concept. Some of the variables are going to be for validation on the variables. They're just going to hold... Um, well, the ones for validation are just going to hold Boolean operators like true or false. It's going to be a real simple script, but it'll, it'll do the trick. It'll get the job done. So the first thing I want to do here is prompt the user to enter a, uh, a new computer name. So easy way to do that would just be to use write host. Please enter a new computer name. And the good thing... Well, you know, anything can happen with a user. In this case, I'm going to, and yeah, it is bad to assume, but I'm going to assume that things will go well and they will hit the keys specified. Or at the worst, they just hit enter. Anyway, that's a little bit later on. So right now, I just want to specify the default and let them know what the default host name is, or the computer name and the environment variable for that is um, comp name. So it will print that there. And then next, I'm going to specify my own variable, um, new comp name. Now, the script is getting distributed. Uh, you, other people are looking at it. Maybe new comp name, you know, maybe that sounds a little vague. Maybe you want to type a uh, computer name. But for this case, it'll work. And um, we'll ask it, yeah, get input from the user by read host. And then... Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to specify was that computer renamed or not, and so I'm going to just create a variable called rename computer. Um, I guess renamed might sound better, but whatever. We know that we know what it is. Rename computer equals true, and need to put the equals in there. Anyway, now so the next thing is an if then statement simple if then logic here if new comp name is uh, if it's equal to like pretty much zip nothing no nil then there's a condition right there so if it's equal to that or you know say new comp name is uh, say it's equal to the actual host name itself and um, like the user just hit enter or they typed the same name then didn't change the name in that case I'm gonna make sure that this variable new comp name is equal to and just hold with me tight here if this doesn't make sense if the new comp name is equal to the computer name and you know one would be like well what, why would you set that it, it already is equal to the computer name, you know, or the computer name is the computer name, just leave it. Well, user, remember, this is a Boolean operation right here, obviously, or, and uh, they could have just 
hit enter. Type nothing and hit enter. So in that case, need to do uh, need to match these two variables up here. Make new comp name equal to environment variable or uh, environment variable computer name. Excuse me. And um, also specify that the rename computer is now equal to false. Now that that's out of the way, right host and ask them for an OU path. Except we're not going to say OU path because not everyone will get that. Make it readable, understandable. Please enter your please enter your desired location. That's good enough for now and good enough for this video. Um, one through four. Okay, we've got four different examples. Um, defaults probably good to specify that. One and uh, go on down here and type the rest of these out. Now I want it to default to Charlotte, so we'll do one Charlotte and uh, two Atlanta. So ATL, three Baltimore, Washington area, and uh, four Denver. Oops, I forgot the period. There we go. Close off the quotes. And that looks good, except you need to assign um, or assign the input to a variable which will be OU. Yeah. Read host. Doesn't have to be OU, just made that up. Uh, that works though. Alright, so now another variable will be created. Um, this will be a validate because we'll need to validate the um, distinguished name that goes with these, the OU path. So I'll just call this uh, valid OU and it'll be set to false right off the bat. Uh, later on, like this line, it will be set to true if this line works out. So I have to specify if if the OU variable is, say, equal to nothing. Say they just hit enter. I'll allow a catch for that and I say or, um, or the OU variable is equal to, I don't know, one, because that is an option then we will set the OU variable. We're going to set this to a distinguished name. So let's see what's first. Charlotte, right? So OU equals computers, first of all. And uh, let's make it look good, capitalize that, make it somewhat readable. I may go downhill from here, but whatever. OU e equals computers, and uh, then OU equals Charlotte. And then the domain component equals example, and then DC equals com, and we'll close that off. There's the distinguished name. Also, the valid OU is going to now be equal to true. And before I before I go on to the next line, I'm going to copy that so this goes a little bit quicker. Now. If OU is equal to 2, now I'm just going with actual things, assuming the user doesn't just hit return. So if the OU variable is equal to 2, then specify or set this variable to this OU path and give it a distinguished name. Let's see what's next. Atlanta. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so Atlanta, and we'll close that off, drop that down, and pretty much we could just copy this whole line now and change a few things. The third one now would be Baltimore, Baltimore, Washington International. How about just Baltimore? All right, whatever. Um, and and then paste it again. Uh, let's see, four. And then, all right, let me look at those real quick. We have Charlotte, Atlanta, BWIDN, good. Then we need to tell the user, just in case valid OU uh, remains equal to false, we need to tell the user, listen, there was invalid input, and uh, we're, we're just defaulting to one. At least that's what they're going to be told. <laughs> so um, if valid OU... Um, if valid OU is equal to 
false. Then I want you to do this. I want you to write host and say invalid input and defaulting to one. How about that? Defaulting to one. Anything else? No. But for that line, we're not finished here. Need to specify that OU is now equal to. Well, let me type all this again and uh, let's see. Need to get rid of that and if we type all that. Then OU is equal to this distinguished name. And we don't need to set that as true because this is a situation where it's false. Alright, good. So creds. This is for credentials. We're going to create a new object. Uh, we don't want this variable viewed or anything. Anyway, getting ahead of the getting ahead of myself here. First, create new object. And where do you want to create it? In system and then management. And then PS cred. Go on, finish up with that. No, not jumping ahead again. First, automation and then PS cred. You don't want to see me type all this stuff, so I'll just try to get through it real quick here. And then, first of all, give it the domain name. Give it some credentials and uh, administrator. Then, another thing that needs to be done is convert. Nope. Need to type more there. Convert. I believe it's convert to and then secure, there we go, secure string, and give it a password, or the password, which is whatever, literally, it's whatever, um, and as plain text, specify that, we don't want to see anything, the user doesn't need to see anything, so just include the force parameter also, and that will do for that line. Now, the next line should be, uh, we could, uh, you know what, we're not going to give them a chance, we're just going to have this operation continue and say write host um, and then adding adding how about that new comp name adding new comp name to the domain just to let them know what's going on and then add computer commandlet and then specify domain name variable and that is example. Don't need to really type .com. I'm going to type it anyway. Uh, and then credential. And for the credentials, guess what? Yep, creds. That's the one, right? Yep, named it creds. All right, so got that done. OU path. And guess what? Yep, OU. All right, cool. Got that done. And now we might need to create a pause. Like maybe press enter to change computer name. And then you can hit enter. It'll run, the, it'll run rename computer, and then it'll change the account name, and you'll be able to see that in the domain controller. So uh, read host and uh, press enter to yeah, change computer name. Now, there's a few different ways that this pause can be created. This is just a real simple one, so we'll go with that. And then, let's see, what next would be rename computer, but was that valid? Remember up here, we have, um, we have rename computer is true, and then it could be set to false. So we really only want to rename the computer if it is true. So before the rename gets executed, we need a conditional statement here. All right, if rename computer is equal to true, only if it's equal to true, will you execute the rename computer commandlet? All right, so rename computer, going to specify a parameter of new name. That new name will be the new comp name. And uh, the main credential will be equal to creds. And that's good enough for that. And then um, we're going to have to... All right, I know now it's getting a little bit jammed together there. It doesn't look so good, and I can't talk and type. So anyway, read host, uh, I'll press enter to restart the computer because it's going to need to be restarted. So press enter to restart computer, and then how about restart computer? 
and I'll just leave it like that. And last but not least, can't forget to save that. I'm going to save it. Let's see. I'll just save it on the desktop and just call this maybe add rename. It gets saved right there. Add rename. All right. So um, anyway, regarding execution policy, let's um, let's run PowerShell as admin and get the execution policy, and get the um, give me a list, and they are undefined. So don't forget about that. But just forget about that for now. Let's set the execution policy use the parameter execution policy and don't put a space in there all right and set it to unrestricted say yes to that that's good close that close PowerShell and to go back here we already have that saved now back over here I'm gonna hit control D go back in here and maybe change the path where were we at uh, if we were at users local admin is literally the name of the admin so that and then desktop and then let's dot slash at rename uh, ps1 and it will say please enter a new computer name so let's give it a new computer name whatever bobs here's my here's my creativity coming into play bobs client uh, let's take off bobs we'll just call it bob client because it will be a client. Anyway, now, before this goes on, before we choose an OU path, so I'll open up a duck, and yeah, we're going to, we're going to drop it in Atlanta. How about that? That will be the path. And you know what? I'm going to have to switch back and forth if I don't resize this. That's really all you need to see right there is the name. That'll work. Okay, let's put some focus there, then back over here, and to Atlanta, adding to domain. If I hit refresh, it comes up as client 20. Guess what? If I do who am I, it's client 20 because it has not renamed it yet. Added it to the domain, but now press enter to change the computer name to Bob's client. All right, I'm going to hit enter. Go over here, refresh this. It just changed the Bob client. And uh, so now enter to restart the computer. Oh, I have the focus in the wrong VM. There we go. Hit enter. And it's restarting. I'll pause when it comes back. Now we have Bob Client. It's renamed. And if I go down here and look at the system, we see Bob Client is part of example.com. So pretty much, let me think, that's all I wanted to cover for this video, which was good enough and took up a decent amount of time. So. There it is. Um, until next time, have a good one.